Hi everybody, this is Muchinetta Kapunde. I am the founder of Fashionate.com. I'm here at the Key House with Trisha Carey from Lensing. Um, Trisha, give us a little idea of what you're doing here at the Key House this season. So at Key House this season, we're highlighting our collaboration with the United Nations Global Compact and relating a lot of the goals around the sustainable development goals back to how retailers and brands can utilize our fibers which is Tencel Lyocell, Tencel Modal, and Tencel Lyocell with Refibra technology. So by using our fibers, you're actually supporting the UN Sustainable Development Goals. That sounds um, quite promising. I mean, it sounds like you guys are way ahead of where I think the industry is. So um, we were on a panel together yesterday, and you made quite an interesting comment about certification. Um, Kind of like, can you share your thoughts again about what you think about it, and and your and and whether it's something that should be um, regulated or less off? I think you said. Could you mind sharing that again with us? Sure. Yes, I I think now, and I see this from working with brands in the U.S. and Europe. There's sort of a certification fatigue. There's too many certifications. It's becoming a large burden on a fiber company like ourselves, as well as the supply chain. And I hear this from our customers, the mills. Uh, knitters and weavers who also feel like how can they keep up with all these certifications. It takes a lot of human resources and monetary resources to have the certifications, the vast array that exists. And so you're working with one brand and they want one certification and another brand wants another. And on top of that then there's so many organizations trying to work around this too. So, you know, whether you have uh, NGOs like Textile Exchange or Sustainable Apparel Coalition who are really providing support and education for the industry, but then there's so many that we have throughout our whole production process from forest because our fibers do come from trees. Um, so from the forestry side, we have canopy, then there's changing markets, there's EDHC. So even though we're a $2.2 billion company, we have about 6,500 employees, it becomes a lot of human resources to manage all of these certifications um, and organizations that we work with. I mean, um, so what would you think would be the ideal solution to this? Well, I think over time, some of them need to either combine and, and, and sort of go away or how we can have some greater alliance and we've talked about this even within the denim industry, several different players, you know, how can the denim industry look at just certain standards that work best for denim? Because otherwise we're all over the place and it's slowing us down. And we have to remember what the real goals are and, and relating this back again to the SDGs. You know, we're all out there to really make a difference and lower our footprint in the environment. But how can we do that when we're putting so much energy in trying to work with this group and that group and, and get these certifications completed? Um, so what can people expect from you in the Key House today? I noticed you brought some stuff to show us. Um, what is it that you are showcasing with regards to um, the attendees? What are they seeing while they're here? Great. Yeah, so over at the Key House, we brought our Refibra collection with us, and this is retail garments as well as capsule um, innovation garments. And we're really showing how Refibra is made. So Refibra uses post-industrial cotton waste in order to make new tensile lyocell cell fiber with Refibra technology. So we're able to transform the waste and make a new fiber that has the same aesthetics as the original fiber. So you still have the strength and the, the uh, soft hand feel of Tencel. And so with that, we're providing a lot of educational materials on how you can communicate this, as well as highlighting you know, with Tencel. So Tencel coming from trees. So we take the trees, make that into pulp. We add a solvent to the pulp. That solvent is reused in a closed loop process at 99.6%. And then what we make is the fiber. So this is all that we make is just fiber. And uh, what we're trying to do then is, is show the retailers and brands and, the, and everyone here, the mills, to give them that education of how we make our fiber, what kind of impact it has on the environment, and how we can work together. Um, when you're talking about companies and so forth, 
Adoption is really hard. I think education, that's where it begins. You need to let people know about you know, how it all works and information so they can make an informed decision. How would you say the industry is adopting what you have to offer? Are they hesitant or would you say they're very kind of like excited about it? Yeah, I think the industry, when they look at circularity, it's coming more a part of their goals and that's helping with the adoptions. Um, so for Refiber, we've had that on the market for a little over two years. Um, and, it, you know, fiber can take a while because we, we come out with the fiber, but then we also have to develop the supply chain, meaning the spinners and the knitters and weavers. So I think each, each season we see this progression of, of more brands coming on. Um, and, and so, I mean, we're quite optimistic of where we can continue to grow this. And it's all about the supporting of the messaging at the consumer level. Um, and I think the consumer is becoming more knowledgeable of the storytelling that needs to happen, that they understand, you know, what their garments are made of. Uh, and this is what we've been working with. So we do have a couple of programs that are launching this fall. Um, we have one with Closed. They're here in Munich. They have their, their store here. Uh, they launched a, a men's um, program with Refibra. We also have Kings of Indigo out of Amsterdam. They've done a lovely group with, with Refibra too. Uh, a couple of U.S. programs that will be launching in the next month or so. We'll wait to keep you posted on that. Um, and uh, I just brought with me a T-shirt that hit retail last week from Bonobos, which is a brand in the U.S. So we, we continue to grow in a variety of different products. And here I was just over at a mill, um, and they've continued to develop more blends, more constructions using Refibra and say, you know, their customers are really understanding how they can integrate this into their line. Um, I did a bit of research on lensing. I know that you're an 80-year-old company, so you've been around for a long time. Uh, and the key house is something new. It's a new concept that Munich Fabric Start has begun a few seasons ago. Um, how do you find, I mean, what are your thoughts on the key house itself? Yeah, I love the key house. Um, I really like it. And, you know, I, I come here and some people say, well, why are you coming? You know, I'm there's other shows around and everything, but I think what makes this unique is that you can find all these little nuggets of information here at Key House. Um, the collaborations, because that's the way that we're going to change the market is by working together. So every year we've, we've had them. I think we've been here since the beginning. You and I were talking about that. Uh, I think there's just a great energy here. The display is, is very creative and, and very inspiring. So, I mean, we get a lot out of Key House. We also participate in other areas of the show, like across the street. But Key House, I think, is special because people come here with a curiosity, and that's what Key House really satisfies. Well, thank you so much, Tricia. We love having you at the Key House. We hope to continue the relationship. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you.